Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind The Country Chic Cottage. Today I'm surrounded by sublimation blanks. But not just any sublimation blanks. These are all things I found at the Dollar Tree that could be sublimated on. Now I purchased most of these when things were just a dollar at the Dollar Tree. It might be a dollar twenty-five now, but still an amazing deal for something you can find at the Dollar Tree. So first, let's take a shopping trip to the Dollar Tree and talk about what you look for while you're there to find things you can sublimate on. So I headed to my local Dollar Tree and I looked at the tags on each of the items. Anything that says 100% polyester was fair game. I threw a bunch of stuff into my cart and experimented with it just for you. So what did I find at the Dollar Tree? I found fleece baby blankets that were 100% polyester, available in a wide variety of colors and perfect for sublimating on for baby gifts. I found microfiber cloths in the car washing section. They're white, perfect for sublimation, and Father's Day is coming up. In the kitchen section, you can find things like polyester tea towels. You might even get lucky and find some polyester pot holders or even some oven mitts. I didn't on this trip, but you definitely should look. Polyester scarves are another thing to look for. You can look for winter scarves or like lightweight scarves that you can use every day. I found a couple of different options at my Dollar Tree, but I'm going to use the lightweight one for my experiments. And then next to the scarves, hats. Tons of different polyester hats are available. I picked up one version, but there were several different ones at my Dollar Tree. My next stop was socks. So there are plenty of polyester socks at the dollar store. I picked up one pair that was a low sock. You could get a high sock, sublimate around the top. Just tons of different options. Look in the sock section, look for 100% polyester on the tag, and sublimate away. And then I went for specialty items. So I found these soft pillows, perfect for sublimating on. 100% polyester, it said it right on the tag. And then ribbon, the Dollar Tree has ribbon. 100% polyester right on it. I got an off-white to sublimate on, but you can experiment with colors as well. And then I found this pencil pouch. Now this is a sequin pencil pouch. To me, this felt like polyester, but it did not say that on the tag. But I was willing to risk it for only $1.25. So certain items I would be willing to risk it, especially if I think, oh, this really feels like polyester. So like both the back felt like polyester and the front, a lot of times you can sublimate on sequins. So why not just give it a try and see what happens? You might like it, you might not, but I think it's worth the trial and error. So if the tag specifically doesn't say 100% polyester and you think it might be, you might take it home and experiment on it a little bit. If you're just gonna keep it for yourself, it might be a win. If you were gonna sell the item, I would definitely launder it a few times and make sure that the sublimation is permanent. So I did wanna note that for any of these, you can use sublimation or infusible inks. If you don't have a sublimation printer, don't worry about it. Grab your infusible ink, grab your Cricut machine, and try these blanks as well. So now that I have all of these blanks from the Dollar Tree, what am I going to do? I am going to head to my heat press and start sublimating on them. Let's look at the other supplies that you're going to need when doing this process. The general supplies you'll need in addition to the sublimation blanks we talked about are a sublimation printer with sublimation ink and sublimation paper installed. Now for any of these you could also use infusible ink or sublimation sheets. Heat resistant tape, a lint roller, some heat resistant gloves, a heat resistant mat, and some of them will need foam or a pressing pillow. Then you wanna keep a roll of protective paper on hand to protect your heat press. So now that we have all of our supplies, let's sublimate on some of these blanks. So now that we're ready to press, let's talk a little bit about time, temperature, and pressure and how to decide, since these are like really weird blanks, like where are we gonna start? with our time, temperature, and pressure. So the first thing I want you to do is look on the back of your sublimation paper. It might have suggestions roughly for time, temperature, and pressure for doing like textiles. Start with those textile recommendations. If you say you found a tea towel at the Dollar Tree and you've done tea towels from a sublimation supplier before, just start with the general recommendations on that tea towel. Now, what am I gonna start with? I'm gonna start with 385 for 50 seconds for most of these blanks. I'm gonna reduce the time, but leave the temperature the same if the material looks extremely delicate. Otherwise, I'm gonna leave it about at that. The hippo sublimation paper tends to say like a lower temperature to me on the back and a lower time. So that's kind of what I have came up with as a good experiment when I'm using hippo sublimation ink and hippo sublimation paper. Now, 400 degrees for 60 seconds is generally a good recommendation if you have no idea. So if you have no idea, there's nothing on the back of your sublimation paper, you've never really done any experiments before, 
you're dealing with completely new blanks. 400 degrees, 60 seconds is usually a good place to start and you can increase or decrease from there. Remember that your first blank with experiments like this may not turn out. You might ruin it. That's okay. It came from the Dollar Tree. Get another one, try again. Sooner or later, you'll have the right time and temperature and be sublimating away. Started with the baby blanket because I've done those before and I went ahead and pre-pressed it and then lint rolled it and then located my design. These baby blankets cause tons of trouble with press lines. So I went ahead and ripped my design all the way around so that if the lines were there, they would at least be broken up a little bit. And then I added a pillow underneath. And I added protective paper on top of the pillow as well as on top of my sublimation design. The pillow will cushion the heat press a little bit and help prevent those press lines. And then I did set my pressure to as light as possible. I went ahead and pressed that 385 degrees for 50 seconds and then peel back and reveal that gorgeous design. Now I can still see some press lines on this one. So what I do when I can see press lines is I take my Easy Press Mini, I turn it all the way up to the third setting and I run it in circular motions around those press lines. That usually gets rid of most of them. Now these blankets, even if you fold them, they have a line on them. So I don't expect to be able to get rid of all of them, but I was able to get rid of most of them and my baby blanket looks gorgeous. Now for the kitchen towel. I followed basically the same procedure. I went ahead and pre-pressed my blank, lint rolled, added my sublimation print, ink side down, taped that into place with heat resistant tape, and then I added protective paper on the top as well as on the bottom before pressing at 385 degrees for the full 50 seconds. Now for this one, I did not add a pressing pillow. You can see where I pressed it as I removed the sublimation print. However, this has a texture to the towel and that texture is gonna get flattened when you press it. There's not a whole lot you can do to avoid that. So I just go ahead, press it, remove my sublimation print. And then I like to kind of fluff it up with my hand at first, just to kind of get that texture back raised again. And then you can use the Easy Press Mini on this one as well, and just run it in circular motions to sort of lift that texture back up into place and make it look a little bit better. I was able to make it look pretty good, and this one's ready for my kitchen or ready for a gift. Now these microfiber towels can be found in the car wash section and they make amazing gifts. So I'm sublimating it in the exact same way as the kitchen towel. So I am, went ahead and tore the edges of my design and then I pre-pressed, lint rolled, added the design to the blank with some heat resistant tape, put protective paper on the top and the bottom, and then I pressed at 385 degrees for 50 seconds. Then you just peel it back to reveal a gorgeous design that is perfect for giving for Father's Day. Now this one again, the pile was basically pressed down by the press. I just kind of fluffed it up and ran the Easy Press Mini around the outside. In the end, there were zero press marks and I was super impressed with this blank. This is actually one of my favorite things to purchase from the Dollar Tree, so be sure to pick one up. Next up is a scarf. So this scarf is a very delicate material. I went ahead and pre-pressed the entire thing and I did tear my sublimation print, then taped it to the ends of my scarf. Now, I did make sure that I had a piece of protective paper on the top that would cover my entire heat press. I didn't want any of the heat press touching the scarf without some protection there. And then I also made sure to put some protective paper under the scarf because it is a very thin material. And then I went ahead and cut the time quite a bit. So I did this at 385 degrees for just 35 seconds just because the material is super delicate and thin. It actually worked perfectly. So peeling back and revealing my design, I was super surprised. And I actually love the way this scarf turned out with the flamingos. This is one of my favorite designs. I've used it on mugs and now scarves. And I must say that the scarf is gorgeous and I'm gonna have to think of a reason to keep this one for myself. Pillows are notoriously hard to press. So for this small little pillow, I had to open my heat press up all the way. It is a clamshell press, so breaking out your easy press on this one might be the way to go. But I went ahead and did it in the same way. So I did pre-press for just a few seconds. I find that pre-pressing something like this allows me to set my heat press in the right location. Then I lint rolled it off, tore the edges of my design and located it with some heat resistant tape. Then I just added protective paper to the top, put it in my heat press, and I pressed it 385 degrees. Then I went for 40 seconds this time. I cut the time just a little bit because I was flattening the pillow so much and I wanted it to be able to rebound. As you can see, the sublimation print turned out great. Now, 
with a pillow like this that has this super thick texture, when you flip that texture up, the sublimation print will be distorted. You may or may not like that, but it is a super cute pillow. It was only a dollar and I was able to sublimate on it. So now let's get into some things that push the boundaries just a little bit. So I found this pencil holder and it has sequins on it. So a lot of times you can sublimate on sequins, but I wasn't even sure if this was possible. So I added protective paper to the inside just in case. I did not preheat this one because I was kind of scared of the sequins. I went ahead and tore my sublimation print, added it to the sequins. You do wanna make sure that your sequins are flipped all down. So you don't want any of them flipped in the wrong direction. Go ahead and add your sublimation print with some heat resistant tape and then add protective paper to the top. And then go ahead and press. And I went ahead and did 385 degrees for about 40 seconds, just because I was nervous about the material. Now this does have a zipper at the top. And what I like to do for things with a zipper, if I can, is hang the zipper off the side of my heat press. So I did that in this case. So the zipper portion hung off my heat press and I went ahead and pressed the design. Now you can see that everything looks great. Now, if you look really closely at the tail, it did mess up the material on the tail a little bit. When you sublimate on the sequins, when you turn them the opposite direction, you won't be able to see the design, which is kind of part of the fun of that. So you might add some more protective paper or try pressing for even less time than I did because it did give like a texture to the tail. It doesn't really bother me, but it did kind of mess up the tail itself. Otherwise, the sequin portion looks amazing. And this is a really fun sublimation project from the Dollar Tree. You can find tons of hats at the Dollar Tree that are 100% polyester. So let's sublimate on one. So I went ahead and added a pressing pillow to the inside and I pre-pressed with that pillow in place. And then I added some protective paper over the pressing pillow, added my sublimation design, tore the edges of course, and used some heat tape to secure that into place. Then once everything was in place, I covered the sublimation print with some more protective paper and I went ahead and put this one in my heat press. Because I didn't want my hat to get completely crushed, I just put the design portion into the heat press and let the rest hang off the side of the press. That's one way to keep weird objects like this from getting completely crushed. And I went ahead and did the 385 degrees for 50 seconds. And as you can see, my sublimation print transferred and it looks amazing. So you can find a wide variety of socks that are 100% polyester. How do you sublimate on them? Well, I wanted to do the bottom of these socks. So I did my pre-press and I pressed them flat. So I made sure that the bottom was flat and then I added my sublimation print to the bottom. Now, I might've done this upside down. I probably should have put the sublimation print the other way, but that's okay, we're learning. So lint roll, add your sublimation print, and add your heat tape. And then you just press your sock. Now, again, I used the same technique where I put part of the blank where it hung off the press. So in this case, the heel of the sock, I hung it off the side of the press. That way it didn't get like smashed flat during the pressing process. And I did 385 degrees, 50 seconds, and a light pressure. Then you peel back to reveal the design. You can see it's bright and vibrant and perfect for gift giving. Now let's talk about sublimating on ribbon. So I did some experiments here. So I basically I printed out a full size sheet of sublimation. So I designed it with a repeating print that says happy birthday. Space the print out enough where the print will fit on the width of ribbon that I have and the spacing between there will allow me to cut in between each of the strips. So I basically cut the sublimation print into strips that were wide enough to cover my entire ribbon. That way I'm changing this ribbon from off-white to pink with sublimation ink. And pink is way more my style than the off-white. So I thought that'd be really cool if I could get it to work. So I cut it into strips and then I sublimated one of those strips. So I just lint rolled the ribbon, added the strip, taped it down, put protective paper top and bottom and sublimated it. I did 385 degrees for 50 seconds and looked so good. Then I was encouraged and thought, why don't I try just keep putting these strips down the entire length of the ribbon and see how long I could go. I did the next strip in the same way, adding the sublimation print to the next area. I did overlap the end of one strip with the beginning of the next. And you could see that a little bit. So you can see a little bit of a line between where I sublimated the two strips. So do be aware of this, but sublimating on ribbon is 100% possible. If you do change the entire color like I've done here, you may have to have that little line in between the areas of your print. So when you sublimate one area, sublimate another, you may see a little line between those two areas. It didn't really bother me. I still thought it looked pretty good. But if you wanna avoid that, I would just not do the background color. So I would have just done the happy birthday across the entire thing, sublimated that on. Then the area between the two prints would not have been an issue. So now I have a ton of really cool and amazing sublimation projects, all with items from the Dollar Tree. 
So I hope you enjoyed these experiments on Dollar Tree items, and I encourage you to head to your Dollar Tree and pick up some things that say 100% polyester or even don't. In the case of this little pouch that had sequins, it didn't even say that. I experimented on it, it turned out amazing. So pick up a few things, experiment with your sublimation printer, sublimation ink, and I think you just might find a new favorite sublimation blank. Now, which one of these is my favorite? So personally, I would say the way this scarf turned out is my favorite. The flamingos on it is amazing. However, I would say I've used the baby blanket several times for like baby shower gifts. They turn out so great and such an expensive gift idea. So I use the baby blanket idea a ton. So I would say maybe that this is my favorite one that I buy regularly. But as of this group, as of the projects I did, probably the scarf. But I would love to know from you which of the projects I did today is your favorite and maybe which are you gonna try? So drop down in the comment section and tell me. If you have any questions while you're there, drop those down below as well. Now all that's left to do is for you to head to the Dollar Tree and start experimenting. If you like this video, if it helped you, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We have videos just like this one every single week and trust me, you don't wanna miss any of those.